Thank you all for coming. This is a very special day for me. Uh, it's the culmination of 20 years' worth of work. The first thing that I want to do is to thank a lot of people who have made this book possible. Though this book carries my name as the author, it could not have happened without the participation of a lot of people who I want to thank personally. Uh, one of the special people was, is in Sweden, a lady called Lotta Ness, uh, who is a lot of the case studies in the book, the stories that go behind the system are from her. So I want to thank her, even though she is not here. The other person I want to thank is my agent, Marianne. Uh, she will want to hide underneath this chair, but anyway. Uh, because without Marianne, the first book would never have got published. And if there wasn't a first book, there wouldn't be a second book. The other very special person that I want to thank is my friend, Meenal. Meenal came to the first seminar uh, for this system for the super coherence system. Before that, it was bioluminetics. And then in 2008, 2009, the super coherence frequencies came into form, if you like. And Meenal came to the first ever seminar. And from that day on, she was the most enthusiastic advocate and champion of the system. Thank you, Meenal. There are loads and loads of others who I want to thank, but, and Meher, Without Meher, a lot of things would not have happened in my life. So for Meher, I have, this book is dedicated to my daughter, my very special daughter. Um, and then there is my friend Sandra. Stand up Sandra. She also is one of those who likes to hide. <laughs> Sandra does all the web work. I'm a total duffer at web work, so I sleep well because of Sandra. <laughs> Without Sandra, it wouldn't happen. Sandra has also devised many of the protocols that go with this system now, which were not there originally, but Sandra was the one who, who made them happen. So special thanks to Sandra. So this has been a long journey. It started with my life falling apart. I think all of you know that story, so I'm not going to bore you with it again. Uh, but the thing was, there was five years down that, from that point, one single phone call, and my life was just put on a different trajectory. So I call that my second life. This is my second life. Though I started off very ignorant when I, when I first knew this system, I didn't know anything. And in fact, somebody wrote me quite an insulting letter saying how ignorant I was. And I, and I was quite insulted at the point, at that point. But actually, it was very salutary because it put me on a very steep learning curve. And that learning curve hasn't stopped 20 years on. So I think my life has been full of steep learning curves. And uh, sometimes you get tired of steep learning curves, but that's the only way you really learn. So... How did these frequencies happen? I think most of you here know about the frequencies and use them. So in that sense, I'm on very comfortable ground. I don't have to describe it to somebody from outside the system, though I would like people outside the system to also understand what this system, the super coherent system, is about. There are interesting things happening uh, where the worlds of science and spirituality are coming together. They have been apart for a very, very long time. And I even got a quote from Stephen Hawking who talks about, I'm just going to read that quote because I don't want to misquote him. And this is the physicist Stephen Hawking. <clears throat> he says it is difficult to discuss the beginning of the universe without mentioning the concept of God. My work on the origin of the universe is on the borderline between science and religion, but I try to stay on the scientific side of the border. It is quite possible that God acts in ways that cannot be described by scientific laws. But in that case, one would just have to go by personal belief. That is Stephen Hawking talking. 
And this is a cosmologist, Paul Davis, who says, he's not a Christian, but believes that the nature of the universe cannot be fully explained without reference to intelligent design. This is a very important point. And in the super coherent system, I think both these things come together. Science and spirituality merge and meld and become one in a way that has not been possible on Earth before. Why is that? And how can I say that? That is primarily because of the device called the Luminator. And I want to thank my great associate, who is no longer with us, who without, without whom this system and my work could not exist. And that is Patrick Richards, who passed away in 2008. And his life was devoted to this work. And Patrick invented a device called the Luminator. The Luminator is one of, in my opinion, one of the most extraordinary devices on Earth at this time, even now, so many years after it was invented. Because it punches a hole through the space-time barrier and allows us a clear glimpse of another universe. And in the book I have said that it goes beyond the scope of an electron microscope or a space telescope because it takes you into another dimension and allows us humans access to that other dimension in, for the mainstream of humanity, which has never been possible. It has been possible for the great, you know, the spiritual teachers and the great masters and the, you know, but what about the 99% of us who are not that? who have not had access to that. And the Luminator gave us access into this internal universe of the human in a way that is unprecedented in human history. And not the thing is, when you posit a problem, it's one thing to say, this is the problem. But what is the solution? For me, what interests me is what is the solution? I can define problems as long as, you know, uh, you know till kingdom come. But the thing is, what is the solution? If I have a diagnosis, it's all very well, but what is the solution is the key. And for the first time, we do have solutions. There is an interesting, we have entered a new age. It's not new agey as you know in the normal sense. It is a, it is a radical new age with great dangers and great possibilities. And it's a wondrous age, and I call it the light energy information age which has changed the rules of how we operate in this reality forever. We're not going to go back. We can't go back. We can only go forward. And the curve is an exponential curve. So there are dangers and there are huge, wondrous opportunities by engaging with this age. There's an interesting saying by a man called Marshall McLuhan, and he says, in this age of anxiety, the result is the result of trying to solve today's problems with yesterday's tools. That's what we've been doing. The, new, the tools that are described in this book, and that have been used now since 2009 in over 26 countries by a few thousand people, the results of which are in the book. These are the tools of today, and they fit the light energy information age because they are light energy information tools. So these are the tools of today. This book also asks a very important and a very, very big question, which I think we have some answers to. And, it says, and the question is, why is it that with all the technological advances of the 21st century and all the teachings of the great ones over the millennia, why is it that humanity is still caught in the cycle of suffering that we see on earth today? Have you ever asked that question? And what is the answer? I'm not going to tell you the answer because it's in the book. <laughs> Buy the book. <laughs> 
But there is a very important thing which most people haven't thought about. And I have thought about it for a very, very long time. And the question is this in my mind, that there is a part of us which is supremely intelligent. You have 50 trillion cells in a human body. They say 50 trillion, 100 trillion, but anyway, these astronomical numbers of cells. Each one of them talking to all the other cells minus one on a continuum, telling each one what to do, how to do, how much to do, when to do. What is the quality of intelligence it takes to do that? And what is the quality of intelligence that humans exhibit in every day of their lives? And the suffering and the pain that they inflict on themselves and on each other. Would you say that there is a glaring disparity between these two different aspects, both of which exist in the same human? So... In this system, I think we have addressed that in a very real way. Because we had access to this other reality and were in a position to understand the processes that are hidden, the 95% of the universe is hidden. I think you all know that. With all the talk of dark matter and dark energy and the whole thing about science knowing 5% and not knowing the, 20, the 95%. The same goes for us. We don't know the 95% of our capabilities. That sounds a little extreme and a little crazy, but I think it is the truth. Because see the glaring disparity between the intelligence that governs your, the human system and the less intelligence that humans exhibit in every day of their lives. So the question is, how can this be addressed? And for this system, you have to understand one single word, and that word is coherence. Coherence, if you understand the concept of coherence, you will understand this system. And if you do not understand the concept of coherence, you will not understand why this system creates the miracles that it does. Miracles are, they only seem miracles. They are always lawful processes that underlie any miracle, that underlie any magic. There are lawful processes that underlie them. So the concept of coherence, to understand the concept of coherence is to understand the exponential curve. Because a 60-watt light bulb lights a small room. And a 60-watt laser can put a spot of light on the moon. And according to William Tiller, who is Professor Emeritus in Physics in one of the universities in California, he says coherence, a coherent laser could poke a hole through the sun 90 million miles away. So the same amount of energy, differently organized, creates an exponentially different result. And the key is only in one single word. The key to that exponential curve is in the word coherence. And humans have this... So, so the, are we lasers? Yes, in a sense we are. Life forms emit light. That was in the first book. So I don't want to go over all that again. But the thing is, we are light energy information beings, not just physical beings. We are physical beings, but we are held together by something other. And we are light energy information beings as well. I think the problem today is that we live in a kind of skeptical age, a cynical age. And unfortunately, <laughs> it will, you will get the results of that cynicism and skepticism. The thing is, when something really new happens, how do you recognize it? Have you ever thought of that? Because you can't process it through your intellect, because it's not about the past. When something truly new happens and, is, and you're faced with that, what is your response? Is it the wow response or is it the no, it's impossible response? Think about that for one minute and see what you come up with. Because when the truly new happens, you will have to have a sense of wonder. And that's the only thing you will have to recognize something that is truly new. No other way. 
So have you got your sense of wonder alive and well? Or has it gone to sleep long time back? That's another question. So this book is about stories that happen with these little tools, these little glass pieces containing nothing that you can measure in this reality. So how do they work? That's the question. How can these little things do that? Hence the skepticism comes in. And I can understand it. To some extent it is justified. But the thing that I will say is that today we have entered another age. You have to experience something to understand it. You can not read about, you may read about it and then experience it. But to truly experience something, you have to have a direct experience. Because looking at these things will not tell you anything. And the interesting thing is that you can say, oh yes, they're round and they're green and it's a male frequency. And this one is pink and this was female frequency. But the frequency that does the job, you cannot see. It is invisible. And that's doing the job. So this invisible universe, which is, if you like, we access through the zero point field, which we access by going through the space-time barrier, lies a very potent universe. It's a parallel universe, but it is immensely powerful. And through an act of grace, we have managed access to it through the luminator and the imaging, and now through the super coherence frequencies. So the, super, the, the magic is not in the frequencies. The magic is in you. But it was locked behind closed doors, more secure than Fort Knox. So today, that, those are the keys to open that door. If you don't have a key, you cannot open the lock. You will break your head against a wall. But if you have the key, the same thing that was impossible one minute ago becomes simply easy. So what do they do? Basically, there is another very important study which is also mentioned in the book and is called the Kaiser Permanente study. And this was done in California by this insurance company called Kaiser Permanente where 17,000 people took part in it. Plus, and what it's called, it's called the ACE study, Adverse Childhood Experiences. So adverse childhood experiences of a certain magnitude created illnesses decades down the line. And there was a very, very strong correlation. So unresolved emotional trauma, which resides at the unconscious and subconscious levels, cannot be easily neutralized. It's almost impossible to do. There are, today there are beautiful new techniques for doing so with EFT and... Um, others, energy, what are called energy psychology. They work very well. But in this system, it is not about the meridians. It is not about the chakras. It is about a level that is beyond. And that, that's why you have to understand the importance of what I call the master number. And the master number is not one to nine, it is zero. The Indian and the Tibetan wisdom traditions have always understood this. They have understood that shunya, which is zero, is the path to self-realization. What is shunya? What happens? Can you become zero? How can you become zero? How can you, as a, as a living person, become zero? It's not so easy, is it? But zero is where everything gets neutral. And the frequencies that we have, which we call the SRTLFs, I'm not going to discuss the other frequencies, but uh, other than that, the main, the, the first key that came were the SRTLFs. We call them the return to love frequencies. And they work because they neutralize this information at the level where it exists. They reduce it to zero. So if the person has had a traumatic experience, that experience stays within the energy field and in cellular memory forever. And it's, unfortunately, it has an effect. 
and it kind of, your life unfolds along that trajectory. To change that trajectory to something that is more nourishing and wholesome, that information has to become neutral because otherwise the pain remains and then is expressed in ugly ways, either throwing it outside, it's called the cycle of suffering, mm -hmm. or by taking it inside and creating havoc in the body. So there, is, there has to be a way to neutralize this information which exists in all of us because we are not the sum total, pardon my using the, uh, only this lifetime. We have been, we are creatures who have been there for many lifetimes and have experienced a lot of stuff. So the thing is, for the human system to get back to zero, these are the master keys. And they, reduce, they do things instantly. This is hard for people to understand that something that has been there for, you know, whatever, 40, 50 years or, you know, six months back can be neutralized immediately because it happens at the level, at the quantum level. It happens at field level. Until you understand the reality of the energy field, you're going to break your head against the wall. That's what people are going to do because until they understand the reality of the field. And in this system, we had access to the field from the very beginning through the imaging, thanks to Patrick and thanks to the Luminator. Because without the imaging, we couldn't have done this work. Today, we don't do imaging, I have to say. So don't come and ask me for an imaging session because it ain't going to happen. But these tools work universally. They've been tested in the field of the Luminator and they work across the board. And they, what they actually do, in 2001, somebody came and gave me a photograph, which is a very loaded photograph, a very special photograph and a very loaded photograph. And it was a photograph of the Divine Mother. And uh, if somebody had given me this photograph 30 years ago, I would have dismissed it as superstitious nonsense. Confession. But because I had done imaging at that point since 1996, 95, I knew that there was an extraordinary reality which I was blind to, which I could only access through the imaging. And so when this photograph came, it kind of turned me upside down. And I thought, okay, this is, there's a legend behind this photograph. And the legend said something like, it was taken in the 1970s by um, a pilgrim in San Damiano in northern Italy. And uh, the Divine Mother appeared to him and asked him to take a photograph. And this was the photograph that appeared. I was like, wow, okay. <coughs> One thing Patrick taught me was, Fritti, do the testing. So it was not, I didn't want just my opinion in there. My opinion is my opinion, so what? Is it real? And so I started doing the testing with this photograph, but only for people who had severe stuff with their mom. And a lot of people have severe stuff with their moms. <laughs> Do you know that? <laughs> yeah, so, so I use that used it for testing that at that point. And we got some very extraordinary results. However, in 2008, 2009, my, my, you know, my life has been full of steep learning curves and it's been like a little bit of a roller coaster. So in 2008, my life fell apart again, you know, instead of one in 1990, it fell apart again because Polaroid decided they were not going to make any more film. And my good friend, Barbara, as soon as my second book, my first book comes out, which was in 2008, she phones me, 3 T, do you know that Polaroid have stopped making film? I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I've done all this work to get this work out and everything is being made zero in short. So it was a very uncomfortable period for about six months. I won't go into that in detail. You can read about it in the book. But after that, what emerged from that process were the frequencies. I'm making a very, very big shortcut. The frequencies emerged directly as a result of that because there was no way that the imaging was going to be possible for everyone anymore. 
And I didn't want anything going out which was not safe for people. It couldn't be safe for me and not for someone else. So we did quite a lot of testing, and we found that it worked across the board. It cleared the family stuff. Families create chaos. Do you know that? <laughs> Anybody not know that? Yes. Yeah. So it created this order, and it did it in this extremely beautiful and simple way. And then there were a series of steps that happened, which refined the process and made it what it is today. Today we know that it works, that it works across the board, that it works for everyone. And what happens as a result of that, we call them the return to love frequencies. Why is that? Because the human system, which science will never be able to explain, at the center of the human system is a place of pure love of pure feeling intelligence. It's a feeling intelligence. This intelligence is not only of the intellect. The intellect is a powerful tool, but it's a very limited tool. And unless it is combined with the intelligence of the heart, with the intelligence of the soul, with the intelligence of feeling, it will always be less. And your life will not make sense to you until you understand that. And what these graceful tools do is that they take the person with no effort to that place. They unlock that place because they are calibrated to zero and to the love that I consider that particular image a symbol of unconditional love, for want of a better term. And because they, the frequency is the frequency, your system goes to love with no effort on your part, no psychotherapy, no nothing, just holding two little pieces of glass. It's called magic. And it's called miracle. And it's called mystery. I just want to read you a couple of case studies which will illustrate the point. Is that okay? Say yes. 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 We have got quite a lot of clients in Sweden. And this is from a client in Sweden. She says, I don't know if I, one of, the, one of the things that I wanted to call this book was the nearly impossible project, because it's breaking the cycle of human suffering. So that's a very nearly impossible project. So, so she's talking about that. She says, I don't know if I can call my relationship with my sister an almost impossible project, but it has certainly felt that way. When growing up, we had a hard time with each other. So I wasn't surprised when it ended totally after my mother died. I put the SRT ellipse on her photo twice. And since then, she has phoned me, she has invited me for dinner, and she has even phoned and congratulated me on my birthday, which hasn't happened in four years. Actually, we didn't speak in these years at all. Now, even my father's son from a previous marriage seems to want to keep in touch. Amazing. How about that? Putting it on, putting a piece of, putting of two pieces of glass on a photograph, and it does that? Is it crazy? Hmm, but it's real. And then there is another one. See, so I have at last finished clearing all my previous imprints, which is what we can do with these frequencies. First from myself, and then from my family. It has taken a while as I have a large extended family. I'm now feeling good despite starting divorce proceedings due to my husband's adultery. Six weeks ago, at the bottom of the abyss, I would not have believed I could progress so, so far in such a short space of time. It is truly miraculous. I feel stronger and more confident, balanced, grounded, and walking tall, taller. My head and my heart are no longer in conflict. Good things are beginning to happen, and my needs are being met on many levels. Friends and family are amazed at how well I am doing and how well I look. If you follow the right steps, this healing system really works. Just carrying two pieces of glass, not any old pieces of glass, two magical pieces of glass. The whole point of this is, that what was very difficult 
became simple, easy, and effortless. That is grace. It's called grace. And the human system is love. The universe is love. Science will never be able to discover that because it's out of its remit. But this system clearly shows that in evidential terms, not my opinion. And that is the first time that that has been seen in real terms. And thank you for being part of my family, my large human family. I'm very, very grateful, very touched that you all came. I cannot describe that. I don't want to start crying. This is not the day for that. Thank you very much. <laughs>